Welcome back everyone. We are going to go through our first method of solving our numerators, solving our a's, b's, and c's in partial fraction decomposition. We're going to use the method of setting factors equal to zero. This will work when you have in particular linear factors um, and they're all different factors. You will be able to solve using this method. This is a shorter method, so we prefer this method over method two, uh, but this method doesn't always work. But we want to show you this method first. So I have 12x over x squared minus 10x plus 16. So I have more power on the bottom than I do on the top to start with in my original. So I can use partial fraction decomposition and I can also factor the bottom. And that's another indicator that we can use partial fraction decomposition. So if I factor, if you think for a second about factoring x squared minus 10x plus 16, you might come up with x minus 8 times x minus 2. And if you did, then great. Good job. That tells that I need to set up one partial fraction over x minus 8 and one partial fraction over x minus 2. Now if you looked in our last video, you noticed that um, this is a linear factor, so we just need a constant here, a, and same thing linear factor here. This would just need a b over that. So we're going to be solving this fraction in its factored form equal to these. Uh, we will go ahead and get a common denominator. I'm going to walk you through just a little bit of a shortcut here. Um, we're only going to solve the numerators when we actually go to solve a and b. So the question will be, we will get a common denominator, but what will really happen to the numerators will be um, anything that is missing below in the fraction will be what gets multiplied into the numerator, right? When we get our common denominator. So if you will permit me here, just to simply say, well, when we get our common denominator, uh, 12x won't have changed because it has the full denominator that we started with. So 12x won't be any different. And I say, what is missing underneath a? In other words, what would I multiply in to this fraction on the top and bottom when getting the common denominator? Uh, the answer is the x minus 2 term that's missing underneath. So the top in the end would look something like this, right? a times x minus 2. The last one, the b fraction, um, x minus 8 is the factor that's missing underneath this one, so we would multiply that in top and bottom when we get the common denominator. And so our numerator for this one would eventually look like b times x minus 8, and eventually we would ignore the denominators and only solve the tops of the fractions, right? So we're going to go ahead and go with that from here. And now letting factors equal zero is what we really want to do for this method. So if I look at this first factor, I have x minus two, and to make that equal zero, I will let x equal positive two. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. That will give us 12 times two equals a times two minus two, which will be zero, plus b times two minus eight, which would be negative six. So here we'll get 24 on the left side and we'll get negative 6b and that will tell us there, once we divide by negative 6, that b is negative 4. So when we set the factor next to a equal to 0, it allowed us to solve for b, so setting this factor equal to 0 will let us solve for a. So in this one we'll let x equal 8 and we'll go ahead and plug that in and solve. So that will give us 12 times 8 equals a times 8 minus 2, so that would be a times 6, plus b times 0. Over here we'll get 96, and that's equal to 6a, and when we divide both sides by 6, we'll get that a is equal to 16. So we were able to set each factor equal to 0 and solve for a and b. So our partial fraction decomposition, we would say 16 over x minus 8, because that was our a, uh, minus 4 over x minus 2, because our b was negative 4. So this is our partial fraction decomposition using the method of setting factors equal to 0. Um, if you have factors that there's no way to make them equal to 0, in particular when you have quadratic factors where that's not possible, you'll have to use the other method. This method won't always work, although it's the shorter method if, it, if you have a choice. Um, so check out our method 2 video about comparing coefficients. We'll see you in the next one.